Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting visual effects. Uh, oh, I need a tissue. Ooh, that worked out well. Well, welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to perform rotoscoping in Adobe After Effects. Rotoscoping allows you to extract and... Mmm, delicious. Mm. No, sorry, distracted. Rotoscoping allows you to extract and separate visual elements from your footage and it forms the basis for many very exciting visual effects. Now, all we need to get started is a remote control. Mm. Excellent. Let's get started. So you filmed your shot and you either forgot to use a green screen or you were genuinely in a situation where you just couldn't use one. Or maybe you just want to add some cool visual effects and you need to extract or isolate a moving element from your shot. Either way, that means rotoscoping. I have recently talked about what rotoscoping is and why it can be challenging and I recommend that you check that video out by clicking on this link up here in the top left hand corner. Rotoscoping can be a very tedious process, but fortunately Adobe After Effects includes Mocha AE, a free, light version of Mocha, which can make this time-consuming process a whole lot easier. In this video, we will be looking at a basic example of how to use Mocha AE for rotoscoping to make a bowl of carrots float through the air. This is going to be a medium beginner tutorial, and I will assume that you know the basics of how to use Adobe After Effects and that you have at least watched my absolute beginner tutorial for how to use Mocha. But now, enough talking, let's make those carrots fly. Welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe After Effects and I already have my composition set up. It just contains a simple clip from the intro where Selena is handing me a bowl of carrots. Obviously, you didn't see Selena during the intro and so the task at hand is to rotoscope out this bowl of carrots so it appears to be floating through the air until I snatch it up. As always, if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, I am going to put a download link to the floating carrots clip down in the description of the video. While shooting the scene, we could also have made Selena wear a green glove, assuming we had one. That way, we could have just keyed it out and then simply cut the clip at the position of the glove. However, since this is going to be a basic rotoscoping tutorial, I simply made Selena carry the bowl into the shot and we are going to rotoscope it out. In general, however, it is always important to look at your clip first and form a plan of attack for the visual effect that you're trying to create. In order to create the visual effect of this bowl of carrots floating towards me and me snatching it out of the air, I will actually need a couple of layers. For one, I will need a base clip where Selena is not at all in the footage and it's just me sitting on the couch and talking to the camera. Right at the point where I'm snatching the bowl of carrots out of Selena's hand, right here I can cut this layer and from this point forward I can simply play this clip with me and the carrots. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to this point here where I've just picked out the bowl out of Selena's hand, so at this point we no longer need to rotoscope. And then I'm going to come up into my toolbar, select the pen tool, and zoom out a little bit and draw a mask around me and the bowl of carrots. So I'm just basically cutting Selena out of this clip. Let's zoom back in, press M to reveal the mask and let's enable the stopwatch icon next to the mask path property. Now my plan is to create a rotoscope layer of this bowl of carrots as it's floating in from the left side of the screen. However, I'm not going to rotoscope out my hands or anything so we have to make sure that my hands are always inside this mask. So let's go back a little bit right here for example, my hands are actually being cut off by this mask and I want to animate this mask path so that my hands are always included in the mask but we can never see anything from Selena. Right there I can see a little bit of Selena's hand so let's adjust that and let's scrub back through. Right there I can see Selena's hand as well so let's adjust that as well. Let's zoom back out and check that out. There's a little bit of Selena's hand still showing in the mask, so let's tweak that and let's scrub back through. That's looking pretty good, but at the end obviously we need to adjust the mask to make sure that my hand and the bowl are back in the shot. Cool, that's looking pretty good. Now, obviously I'm only sitting on half a couch, so we need to fill in this background again because we've basically cut a hole into our floating carrots layer. For that, I'm going to drop another copy of the floating carrots clip into my composition at the very bottom. Bam! The couch is back. 
So if we scrub through, now we don't want Selena in this clip. We don't actually want the bottom layer to ever show Selena. So I'm going to go to the very beginning on my bottom layer, right click and come up into time and select freeze frame. So now the background will always show this empty section. And if you scrub through now, there's the carrots coming in. Now we can see a little bit of a shadow, but that won't actually be too much of a problem once we've got the bowl of carrots rotoscoped. However, I do want to come onto my top layer Press MM to reveal all of the mask properties. And let's increase the feathering by just a bit, maybe five or something, just so the edge of the mask isn't quite so harsh. Let's check this out. Cool, I'm actually quite happy with how this looks. Let's collapse the layer again and rename the bottom one to Backdrop, the one above that to Tobias. And now let's drag another copy of the floating carrots clip into our composition and place it at the very top. And on this layer, we are going to rotoscope out the bowl of carrots. So I am going to rename this layer to floating carrots. Now with our floating carrots layer selected, let's just make sure that in our project panel, the frame rate of this clip is 23.976. And this is important. Once you track in Mocha, you need to make sure that this frame rate matches. That's very important. So with the floating carrots layer selected, come up into the animation menu and select track in Mocha AE. This will launch Mocha and a new project panel will come up. Yes, we do want to track the entire frame range from 0 to 378. And very important, our frame rate should show 23.976. Again, if this doesn't match, your tracks will not align. So this is very important. And let's hit OK. Here we are in Mocha and we can scrub through our clip. And yep, that's looking all fine. So now let's come to a point where the bowl of carrots is nice and clearly visible. Probably about here. And let's zoom in on our bowl of carrots. Let's come up into the menu bar, select the Create X Spline Layer tool, and let's draw a shape around our bowl. You can also use Bezier splines, which will give you round curves, but I do find them a little bit harder to control, especially during rotoscoping, so I'm just going to create a simple X spline. Do note that Mocha is a planar tracker. However, I've drawn a shape around the entire bowl, which is all round and shapely and there aren't really any planes per se to track. In this particular simple rotoscoping example, we are mainly going to use Mocha to just assist us with the rotoscoping. So Mocha is really going to be a rotoscoping assistant. It's going to try to track this shape as best as it can and we're going to keyframe it where needed to follow the shape as precisely as we can. Over in my layer controls, I'm going to rename this shape to carrots and come down into the motion tab and I want to track translation, scale, rotation and shear. I do not want to track perspective because again, there aren't actually any perspective planes that we can track. So with all of that enabled, I'm simply going to start tracking forwards. Let's quickly escape out of that, but you can see that Mocha is doing a pretty decent job of following this moving bowl. Now the shape is drifting off a little bit at the bottom, but we are going to fix that up in a little bit. Now, there are two schools of thought. One is you can adjust the shape as you go through and track. Personally, unless something goes horribly wrong, I prefer to track my shape through all the way forwards and backwards as best as I can, and then do the actual keyframing for rotoscoping, but do whatever works best for you. So I am going to continue tracking forwards and just make sure that the shape holds on fairly decently. And that is probably the point where you can stop tracking because at this point, uh, maybe one more and one more and another one. I just want to track it to the point where Selena's hand is completely disconnected from the bowl. After this point, I will no longer have to rotoscope the shape. So what I'm going to do is under the layer controls at the bottom, there's an out point marker so we can set the out point for this layer. So after this, the shape won't exist anymore because we don't need to track it anymore. So let's come back to our initial frame. Zoom out a little bit more and let's track this backwards. Cool, that's not looking too bad. The shape is holding on all right-ish. Let's just leave this tracking. And that's probably as far as we're gonna get. Again, let's go to the very first frame. Zoom in a little bit, probably here. And I'm going to actually reposition this shape to be over the bowl. And again, come into the layer controls and at the bottom, we're going to set the in point for this layer. So nothing on the left side of that is going to be tracked. And did you note that as I repositioned the shape, a little green triangle got created here on the timeline. This indicates a keyframe on this shape. It is important to understand that the keyframes we're going to create for the shape and the tracking data that we generated with Mocha are two separate things. 
Mocha has created tracking data from this moving bowl and made the shape follow this object as best as it could. We're now going to add keyframes to the shape to make sure it always matches exactly over the shape of the bowl so we can rotoscope it out cleanly. The advantage of using Mocha is that a lot of the keyframing won't be necessary because the shape is already tracked to the movement of the bowl and we really just need to do the adjustments to kind of retain the shape properly. Whenever you are rotoscoping it is important to try to avoid creating keyframes right next to each other. This will create really stiff and jerky and unnatural movement and the rotoscoping will be really obvious. You always want to try to create keyframes as far away from other keyframes as possible. And you should try to create the keyframes when the shape and the object you're trying to rotoscope are most misaligned. This will then allow you to use the least number of keyframes required, which will then give you smoother movement and hopefully a better rotoscoping result. So let's find the point where the shape is most misaligned with the bowl, probably about here, which is a good point because it's in between these two keyframes. And let's zoom in and let's readjust our shape. Now you can drag the entire shape around you can also very easily rescale it. Um, you can also, if you click outside and drag, select a number of points and just move those. Or you can just move point individually, whichever you find easiest, to just kind of capture the exact outline of the carrot bowl again. Make sure that you don't actually get anything of Selena's hand in it, so just the side of the bowl. Also, if you ever find that you've got too few points to smoothly wrap around the curve, you can come up here into the menu bar and select the point insertion tool and then just click on your spline and add another point in. Let's return to the pick tool and Mocha has created another keyframe. Let's zoom out a little bit and let's continue this process. Let's go backwards first and just see where that shape is most of. Probably, wow, it's kind of getting a bit whack here. So probably about here I'd say the shape is pretty far off the ball we're trying to rotoscope. So let's again go in and adjust all of this manually. If you've got a number of points selected and you just want to return to selecting individual points, you can just click outside of your selection and then you're back to single point selection mode. And let's just continue to tweak this until we've got the shape nicely captured. Let's zoom out again a little bit and go back. And we're basically just going to continue this process. We're always going to find new keyframes where the shape is the most off and then just reposition the shape to fit exactly over our carrot bowl. Yes, this is a fair amount of manual work, but just imagine how much harder this would be if Mocha hadn't already provided the basic tracking of the shape to the bowl of carrots. Let's go back a little bit more and yeah, right here towards the end, the bowl is kind of moving at an awkward angle. So I think I'm going to have to manually adjust quite a lot of frames. Not a big fan, the keyframes are getting a little bit close to each other, but there isn't really much we can do about this. Hopefully because the bowl isn't fully in shot, it won't be too noticeable. And yes, I'm speeding up this video just so you don't have to watch me do all of this manual work. You're going to have all of this fun yourself anyways. Once the bowl is in the frame, it does move a whole lot smoother. So I think there'll be a lot less keyframes required. But again, let's find points between two consecutive keyframes as far from either one as possible. And let's keep adjusting our shape. And make sure Selena's hand isn't actually in the shape. It's just the bowl. Ooh, and there the shape is going quite far off. And again, right here is a good example. We're actually finding the point where the shape is the most off and it, it's clearly the most off right here. So I'm basically going to select all of these points and just kind of push them back in. And it's still drifting off, so we'll just have to keep fixing this. And I think we're past the hardest part. Now, obviously, I'm still going to have to keep reshaping this to make sure we're tracking our bowl of carrots precisely. And I'm aware I'm probably not doing the best of jobs. You can probably spend some more time cleaning this up really, really precisely. So I think I'm doing it. I'm doing a decent job, but probably not the best I could. And as I keep saying, this is still quite a bit of work, but Feel free to try this out using masks and after effects or maybe even the roto brush tool. It'll probably take you a whole lot longer. And you may notice that whenever I do create new keyframes, I always try to be between, like kind of in the middle of two other ones, so I'm not placing them right next to each other. At the beginning it was a bit unavoidable, but here I'm trying to space them out as much as I can. Obviously we're still ending up with a fair few of keyframes, but I think the shape itself is a little bit difficult to track just because it's a really round bowl of carrots. Let's go to the end because the shape is definitely very, very off. 
And in this particular frame, I don't actually have to worry too much anymore about what's underneath the right side of the shape. We have this content included in our Tobias layer already anyways. So I really just care about the left side here, making sure that the area where Selena's hand is touching the bowl is nicely rotoscoped out. But I think the rest is actually pretty good. I'm just going to make a few small tweaks to a few of the keyframes. Cool, let's zoom all the way back out and scrub through this. And that actually looks pretty good. Now, the whole exercise took me just over 37 minutes, but I do have to say we did create quite a lot of keyframes just because of the movement of the bowl. For a lot of rotoscoping I've done in Mocha, especially for simpler shapes, I did end up with a whole lot less keyframes. But still, just imagine how much longer this may have taken if you used masks in Adobe After Effects or maybe the Rotobrush tool. Anywho, now that we're done with the tracking in Mocha, let's get to the fun part. Let's make sure the carrots layer is selected. Come down into the menu and select Export Shape Data. Make sure we select Mocha Shape Data for After Effects. Select Copy to Clipboard. Let's come back down into Adobe After Effects. Go to the very beginning of our composition. Make sure the floating carrots layer is selected. And now we can come up into Edit and there will be a Paste Mocha Mask option here. If you don't have this option available, I think it's some earlier version of After Effects, you have to install a separate plugin. And I'm going to put a link to all of the software downloads for Imagineer Systems down in the description of the video. So go check that out if you don't have this option. But now let's select Paste Mocha Mask. And if we press M, you can see you now have a carrots mask tracked to the floating carrot layer. And this is all of the work we've rotoscoped. So this is all of the data from Mocha exported. And now if we scrub through our composition, huh. Floating carrots. And there you go. I'm grabbing it off Selena's hand and we're cutting over seamlessly. The very last thing I'm noticing right about here, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see a little bit of that harsh edge of the mask and you can still see a bit of Selena's fingers in here. So the two things we can do for that, for one, let's expand the mask properties and we can increase the mask feather by a bit. I don't wanna push this too far. Maybe I'll just set it to one just to soften out the edge just a little bit. And finally, Let's enable motion blur on the floating carrots layer and on the composition. And that will basically add the motion blur back in and it just looks a whole lot more natural. And now the last thing we need to do, zoom all the way back out, rewind our composition and play back our final floating carrots effect. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you did enjoy this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. And don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.